Welcome to this Wealth Academy educational series. I'm Adam Koo. And in this lesson, we'll be looking at how do you profit by trend following the index. First, a quick recap. In my previous lessons, I talked about how indices always go up in the long term. For example, if you look at the US indices like the S&P 500, the NASDAQ and the Dow Jones, although they go through ups and downs, they are cyclical in the short term, in the medium term, but in the long term, they always go higher because of population growth and because of inflation. So if you are a long-term investor, it makes sense to simply buy and hold the index for the long term using ETFs or simply dollar cost averaging. In fact, if you look at the last 30 years, if you had held on to the Dow Jones as a long-term investment, you would have gotten a total of a 991% increase in your capital. That amounts to a compounded annual growth rate of 11.84% with dividends reinvested. But if you look at it from a medium-term perspective, it tells a very different story. So if you look at it, from a five-year perspective, for example, from 2006 to 2011, and that was a very volatile period where we went through the great financial crisis. What if you employed the buy and hold method at that time? You would have gotten slaughtered or you would have wasted your time. For example, in 2006, the Dow Jones was at about 11,000 points. And imagine if you bought the index or you bought the ETF or you bought the blue chips, and you held on to it, and five years later in 2011, it was somewhere around 12,000, which is a very slight increase. In fact, it's more or less break even. So you can see that the buy and hold method only works for the very long term if you're willing to hold for 10 years or 15 years or longer. But in the medium term, which is five years or maybe three years, you cannot buy and hold. Because you can buy and hold for five years and break even, and you've wasted all your time. Or imagine if you bought over here, and you held it, you know, to here. You know, in four years you would have been down five to ten percent. If you bought over here, and you held it, you know, three years later you're down fifty percent. So if you want to make money consistently in the short term and the medium term, you can't simply buy and hold a stock on index. You have to do trend following. What does it mean? If you look at any market, they move in cycles or trends. So for example, a market can go through a phase known as an uptrend phase, where the market is optimistic, it is bullish, and the economy is growing. So on an uptrend, prices tend to make higher highs and higher lows, that even though the price goes down, it goes higher each time it goes down. At the same time, markets would from time to time reverse into a downtrend. And downtrends can last for one to three years. So a downtrend happens when a market goes through a period of uncertainty, crisis, recession. So you can see this is a period of a downtrend during the financial crisis when prices still go up. But every time they go up, they go much lower. They go up, they go much lower. They go up, they go much lower. So the market makes lower highs and lower lows. If you want to make money consistently in the short to medium term, you have to follow this important principle. And the principle is this. You only invest with the trend. The trend is your friend. In other words, you only buy when the market is on a clear uptrend. And you never ever buy when a market's on a downtrend. Because on a downtrend, the statistical probability is that prices will go lower and lower. It's kind of like a river current. You always want to follow the current and not go against the current. So going back to that chart, you can see that the market over this period went through an uptrend over here. It went through a downtrend and back into an uptrend again. So if you simply invest with the trend, you would enter the market over here. You'd buy over here, somewhere over here, at the beginning of the uptrend. So as it goes up, you're profiting from the market. And the moment it reverses into a downtrend, you have to exit at the beginning of the downtrend. So as the market collapses, you're not caught. You're not losing your profits. 
And after everyone gets slaughtered in the market, you know, and it reverses back into an uptrend, that's right, you buy it back over here and you write the trend back up again. All right? So imagine if you were to buy over here and you sell over here and you get out before the crash and you bought back in over here and you sold somewhere here, bought it back over here and held it to here, would you have made a lot more money? Of course, you'd have made a lot more money than the person who held it over five years and barely broke even. So the question is, why doesn't everyone do this? <laughs> well, the reason is because many people, the majority of people in the world, including many of the professional fund managers and bankers, they've got no idea how to read trends. They've got no idea you know, when the trend has changed or what the trend is now. Now, here's the good news. There are a few people who know this secret, and I'm one of those people. And that's how I've been making money consistently every single year for the last 15 years. And that's how my students make money from this. And in this video, I'm going to teach you how do you identify a change in trend. Because the moment you can identify the trend, you can make a lot of money. At the same time, save your heart and money when a next downtrend happens. So how do you read trends? How do you know when a trend has reversed? Well, there are many strategies which I teach. So the simplest one I can give you right now in a couple of minutes is using a moving average crossover technique. You can see from the chart over here, I'm using the 50 and the 150 day moving average, which is the blue line and the green line. Now, moving averages are drawn by the computer charting software that you use. So it's all mathematically calculated. All you got to do is to input it into the software and the software will generate these two lines for you. So I'm not going to go into the mathematics. I'm just going to show you how it works. Here's how it works. Listen carefully. Always remember that on a downtrend, on a downtrend, the 50-day moving average, which is the blue line, is always below the 150-day moving average green line. So in other words, when the 150 green line is above the 50 blue line, you never ever want to buy or be in the market holding a stock because it's a confirmed downtrend and probability is that prices will keep going lower and lower. Now, here's a simple way to remember this. Imagine this is a 50 kilogram man, a skinny man, right? The blue one. And the green is a 150 kg big man, right? So when a big man is, sits on top of the small man, what happens? That's right, they go down, they die, right? So that's how you can remember it. At the same time, on a downtrend, always remember that both moving averages are sloping down. The slope is really important. So once again, on a downtrend, the 150 is above the 50 and both moving averages are sloping down. So how do you know it's time to buy? How do you know it's a confirmed uptrend? It has reverse trend. Well, there are two criteria to look at. Criteria number one is the two moving averages must stop sloping down. In other words, they must flatten and or slope up. And both of them have to be sloping up or flattened. Criteria number two, the 50-day moving average, which is the blue line, has to cross above the 150-day moving average green line. So now, the skinny man is on top, the big man is below, and the big man can carry the skinny man, and that's why they go up. Again, that's a simple way to remember that. Clear enough? Okay, now, the reverse is true. On an uptrend, as you can see over here, on an uptrend, the 50-day moving average is above the 150. And both moving averages are, that's right, they're sloping up. So if you're in the market and you're riding the trend, you ride it all the way, you stay invested. But you have to know when to get out, when to exit. So how do you know the trend has reversed to a downtrend? Again, two criteria. Criteria number one, both moving averages must have stopped sloping up. They must be flat or sloping down. For example, you can see over here, it's flattening. Sloping down, the blue is sloping down, the green is flat. Criteria number two, the 50 
has to cross below the 150. So the moment you see that crossover and neither are sloping up anymore, you sell. You got to sell before the downtrend commences. And it's that simple. So let's go back again to our five-year chart. So now you can see that by putting in the 50 and the 150 day moving average, it becomes very clear when to enter and exit the markets. So if you go back to 2006, you can see the 50 crossing above the 150 and it, they're both sloping up. So that is a, an uptrend signal. And that's when you buy, right? As you buy, it's going up and you're making money from that. Now over here, as you see, it goes through a, a short correction, a correction, you don't sell. Why? Because it's still an uptrend. The 50 is above the 150. It's merely what we call a dip on the uptrend. In fact, that's where you buy more. You always buy the dip on the uptrend. So when you exit over here, the moment the 50 crosses below the 150, you can see the 50 is sloping down. The green is flattening, right? Over here, that's when you exit. You have to sell. So once you sell, what happens? You get out before the market crashes. And you can see that many people who do not understand this, they may have bought over here. They, they think it's going up and they buy. And the moment they buy, it goes back down. They die. Right? They say, I'm going to, you know, it's going up. They're buying, it dies again. It go up, dies again. So the market has a way of teasing you and killing you. Teasing you and killing you. So you do not want to buy at these false signals, at the rallies on the downtrend. Let everyone get killed. And you only enter over here when the 50 crosses back above the 150. You buy it over there. You can exit over there. You buy it back over here and you hold it all the way there. So notice that we are not attempting to predict where the market is going to go. We are simply following the trends. If you do that, you would enter over here and exit over there for 22.7% return in slightly over a year and a half. You would enter here and exit over here for 31% return in one and a half years. And enter over here to there, it's about 19% return in over six months. That is a total of a 72.7% return over four years. That's much better than holding for five years and getting less than 2% return. Now, this works on any market. I'm from Singapore, so let's look at the Singapore stock market. This is Singapore Straits Times Index from 2007 to 2012. So the same thing happens. If you were to buy the Singapore Index over here back in 2007 at 2,600 points, and you held it all the way to 2012, you would have broken even. Zero returns. You're wasting your time. Stupid, right? But if you use the 50 and the 150 day moving average to look at the trends, you can make a lot more money. So you would have entered over there. When the 50 crossed the 150, you have exited over here before the major crash. You clock a 40% return in a year and a half. You would re-enter the market somewhere over here. When it crossed over, you enter it here. You would exit over here for 39% return, and that is a 79% return in three years. So this is a very powerful method to profit by trend following. And notice again, we are reading the medium term trends. Now, no system, no technique is perfect, all right? So what's the disadvantage of this method? The disadvantage is that it's a lagging indicator and it's a bit slow to react. So you can see, for example, the market topped over here at 3,900 points over here. By the time the 50 crossed the 150 over there, and by the time you sold somewhere here, you would have sold it at 3,200 points. So you would have already missed the first 20% or 25% down. So it's slow to react. Similarly, the market bottomed over here at 1,470. By the time the 50 crossed the 150 and you bought in over here, you would have bought in at 2254. Again, it would have been very slow to react. So this method doesn't get you in at the bottom. It doesn't get you up at the top. But it still makes you some pretty decent profits. Of course, if you want to get in earlier and exit earlier, you have to use more advanced techniques, which I teach 
in the Wealth Academy program. But for now, I hope it, you find this useful and you can profit from this as an investor. This is Adam Koo, your investment coach. Thank you for listening and remember to subscribe for more videos.